Hello there and welcome to UK Diesel and Electric Railway Modelling. In this series of videos I'm going to do an upgrade on this Helgen Class 33-2 going through various stages of improvement. It's a nice model with a sound body shape and it runs very well but there are a couple of errors as well as some details that can be done to it and turn it from a nice ready to run model and turn it into something that looks far more realistic to the prototype. The first is the livery. I've never really liked the shade of Departmental de Grey that Elgin use. It's too dark and the roof is almost the same colour. If you compare it to this Class 26 I've painted, you can see how much lighter it should be. So the loco will be stripped down and resprayed. I've been using this loco for a while and so far I've numbered it from 33201 to 33202 and fitted some etched BR and Stewart's Lane depot plaques and once it's completed it will re regain this identity complete with the Burmastar nameplates. Another issue is on the chassis. The central springs are out of position and should be recessed inwards. As it comes they're pretty much in line with the axle box frames but if you see in this photo they should be set much further back. But one of the significant upgrades is to replace the plastic moulded roof grille. For me, this will take a nice looking model and make it look spectacular by some comparison. Shore Plan's extreme etchings make a very nice replacement part and makes a huge difference to the model and I'll show you how to assemble the etch in the next video. And finally, on the roof, these roof ventilators are slightly in the wrong place. They're a little too wide apart, so they'll be moved inwards. So the first thing to do is to disassemble the model. The 33-2 is a little tricky to open because there isn't an overhanging lip on the body like there are on the 33-1s and O's. To pop it open, use sticky fingernails in between the chassis and the body at the centre of the model and then slide up and down to dislodge the four clips at the, each end of the model on each side. Sorry if the model disappears off the screen, it just illustrates how difficult it is to open up. You can use cardboard or plastic if you don't have fingernails for a job. When taking a model apart, pop the parts in a tray or a separate plastic box so nothing goes astray. There's nothing worse than being unable to finish a job because you lost a key component. First out come the headlights, and then the cabs. I'll be replacing the glazing, so I just push the windows out with my finger or the blunt end of a paintbrush. But if you want to keep the glazing, then you should remove all the parts you can and then strip them all in a plastic friendly paint stripper which won't frost it up. The paint stripper will soften the glue and make it easier to remove the glazing. I'll be making some new circuit boards for new lighting with rectangular blanks and shine white or red light through it for bidirectional lighting. Remove the lamp irons and then the windscreen wipers. This is done by pushing on the inside with a knife or a blunt end of a drill secured in place in a, in a pin vise. Be careful to point them down so when they pop off they won't go flying off somewhere. Time spent on your hands and knees searching for a tiny part is time that you're not doing any modelling. To remove handrails I use a small blunt flat headed screwdriver. Pop it off at one end and wiggle it a bit to make sure the other end dislodges. Sometimes you have to give it a little more encouragement by pushing it out from the inside like the lamp irons. And now the model's ready for stripping. <laughs> 